All right, brothers and sisters, shalom. Um, I just wanted to share some revelations from the Most High with you. First, I'm going to read the scripture, and then we're going to follow how powerful and certain the Word of God is, okay? Let me move this, because i got a few things in my hand, so bear with me. We're in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 26, verse 19. Thy dead men shall live, together with my dead body they shall arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs. And the earth, sorry, I blocked my face. And the earth shall cast out her dead. Okay, we're in the book of Isaiah, chapter 26. Verse 19. Also, we're going to go down to verse 21. Book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 21. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. When I first read this, um, and this was a few years back. I didn't totally understand the interpretation or what it was saying. So I spoke to Yah about it. I asked God, I, I need a greater understanding. You got to make it plain. So after I asked him, I went into a deep sleep and I woke up in the middle of the night and I was watching this exhumation. It was an exhumation on TV. The television had been on. Well, now remember what I just said. We're in Isaiah, uh, book of Isaiah, chapter 26, and I'm going to go down to the 21st verse, the last um, statement. The earth also shall disclose. Matter of fact, I'm going to read it all. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, for their evil. The earth also shall disclose her blood. That means murder, okay, death, the dead, and shall no more cover her slain. So as I'm reading this, I'm like, well, how does the earth not cover her slain? And then God showed me because I asked God to show me. I want to show you a picture of something to give you the example God gave me. This is a picture of Megar Evers. It is in 1963, after he was murdered by Byron De La Beckwith, I believe his name is, Byron De La Beckwith, uh, but that's him, 1963, okay? Now, I'm going to show you a picture. He was exhumed. They tried Byron twice. And uh, it was thrown out, hung jury, uh, they couldn't convict him. But then the case was reopened. And uh, when they reopened it, one of the things that they did was exhume Mega Evers' body. It's 28 years later, okay? And this is what they saw. This is Mega Evers. 28 years later, his body was so perfectly preserved. I want to show you the other picture. So you look at that, okay? Then I'm going to show you the other picture, okay, of 1963. This is him in 1963. When they cover him up, okay? Now I'm going to show you him in 19... 91 when they exhumed his remains okay now there was barely any decomposure and the the, the words of Yah were uh, were just living they were intense and I had asked God and when you ask God when you see God will tell you okay brothers and sisters I'm gonna read it again and I'm in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 21. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place.
to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Okay. These are revelations. I'm giving you the revelations God gave me. All right. Now, I'm also going to show you something. And I'm not sure if I should show you these images or not, but God showed me. I had just read this. I mean, well, I had read it before, but I have questions. Um, I sit and I talk with God. I talk with the Spirit of the Lord. And when I ask, he answers. When we seek, we find. When we knock, he opens the door of our understanding. And I was in the book of, uh, of Zechariah. Okay, I'm going to try to bring the image up. I don't know because this is intense. So I'm, 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 I'm kind of questioning, should I show you what you need to know? Like I knew. And I, I would say if it's too much, look away. But it's true. Okay. Let all men be liars and God be true because he is. He is. Okay. The most high. He does not lie. He can blow our minds with the truth. He don't have to get some newfangled stuff because he does above and beyond anything we could ever hope or imagine. Listen to the words. He does above and beyond anything we could ever hope or imagine. Okay. Now. Hmm. This is Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Listen to the words, brothers and sisters. Listen to the words because, hey, I thought it was just going to be like from a nuclear fallout. That My first thought, this is what I had surmised. Mm -mm. That may be part of it, but let me tell you something. Oh, I'm going to give it to you. Okay? Wait a minute. Uh, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord shall smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. Okay? Now remember what it said. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. That's why initially um, I had thought, this must be from a nuclear fallout. Okay, wait a minute. There is a drug, okay? There is a drug. It's in Russia running rampant, but it's also crossed in the U.S. It's called crocodile. Crocodile. Um, it's so powerful. It... it uh, I'm wondering whether I should show this to you because some of you might want to look away. I'm just going to show you a couple of the images. While these people are living, remember, their flesh, that's her bones. Good God Almighty. Their flesh will consume away while they stand upon their feet. I don't even want to show you the one about their eyes consuming away. In their holes, because one guy half his face he's walking, and half his head is just decayed, and it's it's. A, I had to, and I left. I you know I'm sensitive, but God is true. Okay, let me let me. This is a lot for me right now. Let me let me. I'm trying to like get this image down because there are multiples of these. Okay, um, now naturally it's going to show off. Um, if you see. This is crocodile. Now, we're not talking about the one, the picture up there. It's a drug. This is what happens to their feet. Their skin just rots away on their bones. I'm not showing you any more videos or pictures of it. There is a video uh, I would suggest because it's spelled K-R-O-K-O-D-I-L. I would advise that you check it out for yourself. However, um, the point that I have made and am making is, we're in the book of Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord shall smite all the people that fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. There were videos of it. There were pictures of it. One man 
he he looked like the walking dead it, it, kind of, it freaked me out i was like okay i'm done with this because this give you nightmares they look like zombies but it's real it's worse than a movie because it's real it's not contrived it's not made up and it's in the now it's in the now as we're free from those curses the plagues are coming upon them like gangbusters um it's it's it's, it's unbelievable it's shocking all right um one of the other things I wanted to bring out, uh, I gotta find my book. You gotta bear with me. Use your patience. All right, I'm feeling the love, feeling the love. Okay. Um. Everybody, one of the things I had made was, um, I'm getting hot. I'm gonna pause this so I can go turn the fan on. All right, brothers and sisters. One of the other pieces I'm just dropping revelations. As they came to me and as they come to me. We are now in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 30. Um, verse 20. Um, and I'm going. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity. And the water of affliction. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. All right, and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers, like the brothers and the sisters that drop knowledge on uh, YouTube, uh, those of you who uh, get them on Facebook. Thine eyes are seeing thy teachers as the Lord gives us these revelations and these words of encouragement and knowledge. Your eyes are seeing it. His words are coming to pass, okay? And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left, okay? Now, I want to give you another word. One of the things that's going on right now, a lot of people are talking about three days of darkness. Three days of darkness. Okay? Um, so, I want to, I spoke to the Lord on it, and this is what he gave me. Now, one of the things you got to keep in mind is the fact that uh, for now, we prophesy in part and we see in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So I can only give you the revelation or the knowledge that God led me to. As it comes to me, I will pour it out on you. Okay? Now, there are uh, two different darknesses that are coming. Okay, like I said, you got a lot of people, a lot of people talking about the days of darkness, these three days of darkness. I'm going to go to Exodus chapter 10, verse 21 through 23. Exodus chapter 10, verse 21 through 23. Bear with me. Okay. It is chapter 10. Okay. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings, okay? Now, um, the day of the Lord is thick darkness and judgment, okay? But a lot of people are saying this, uh, and they're speaking of the fact there's supposed to be something in the darkness, um, that lined me up with the thought of, of, or the belief of the Passover, when the destroyer came, the angel of death came, okay? But he would not come nigh the dwelling of the Israelites, of the Hebrews. First of all, they put the blood of the lambs upon the, the post of their door, upon the lentils, basically the way your door is shaped 
they put the blood of the lamb. All right. Uh, at this point, I believe the blood of the lamb from our hearts is sealed around the doors, sealed around our doors. Um, now let me finish. Um, wait a minute. I want to go to Psalms 91 because a lot of people are talking about there'll be demons in the darkness. Don't go out. Now, to be quite honest, I wouldn't go out in thick darkness that could be felt. I mean, gross darkness. But according to the word of God, and, and, I, and it's written about in many different places in the Bible, and we're going to speak on that. However, I'm going to read Exodus 10, verse 21 through 23 again, okay? Because when they talk about these plagues, all right, the plagues are supposed to be on the enemies of Israel, okay? And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand towards heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. All the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. I'm going to say it again. All. Not some, not that one over there. All the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Okay? Now, we're going to go, the second realm of darkness, they're talking about the day of the Lord. Darkness and judgment. But this darkness, I want to speak of right now because uh, the day of the Lord, it definitely shall be darkness, but this three days of darkness they're talking about is different. It's 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 a separate thing, okay? Um, in Amos chapter five, they talk about the day of the Lord. They talk about it in the book of Job. Darkness is a judgment, okay? Um, there it was a judgment in the book of Exodus chapter ten, okay? And uh, but let's go to Psalm ninety. Let's go to Psalm 91, all right? Now, I have read, do not go out uh, during that time, and I understand that, but I, I got to find it. But right now, I'm going to go to uh, 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 Psalm 91, okay? Now, this is for people who, the way they are explaining it, some people are starting to experience terror. They're starting to experience terror. First thing common sense would be if and when the three days of darkness come, um, I would pray, study, fast. I definitely would stay indoors. I mean, why go out into it? Um, but I'm going to read Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. He shall deliver thee. Okay. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Now here it is. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, okay, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Okay, that wasted a thousand may shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh in thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. The reward, the reward of the wicked. Okay, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil. Befall thee, no evil, no evil, okay? 
Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. It ain't coming near your house. I'm naming and claiming, decreeing and believing. Okay? There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he, who's he? Yah, the Most High, Elohim. Okay? For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands. Okay, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. That thing that devours. That thing that devours. The lion is a devourer. The adder, that poisonous, slithery snake. Okay? Wait a minute. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him more high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will answer him. Okay? And I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. If God is coming for us, Okay, we have to trust in him that he is going to take care of us, okay? A thousand shall fall at thy right, at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee, okay? Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, okay? Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday, all right? I'm going, I'm moving around within the, uh, the psalm itself. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, okay? There are people, I'm sure, that they have, justifiable reasons why they are talking about this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go to Revelations chapter 9. Revelations chapter 9. Okay. That there is a day of darkness. Okay. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit, the grave, death, the place from whence there is no return, the bottomless pit. Isn't the grave, when you think about it symbolically, the, the Bible is written with symbolism and yet literal, okay? The bottomless pit. When people go into the grave, on the physical realm, up until God wakes us up, okay, there's no returning. There's no returning, okay? The bottomless pit. Okay, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. But remember, he gave his angels charge over you. These are plagues, okay? Who are the plagues for? Who are the plagues for? It's for the people who have done evil in the eyes of God. It's not for his elect. We shall simply witness, remember what he said, we're going to witness the sinner's reward, okay? All right? And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. Locusts devoured that which is living, and they leave behind destruction. There came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. When they sting, it's a crippling sting. I personally never got stung by a scorpion, so I'm only giving to you what I've learned about it. I do not want to have personal knowledge of it, but it's a crippling sting, okay? And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads, okay? And to them was given that they should not kill them. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was in, was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. 
And in those days, men shall seek death, and they shall not find it, and desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. Okay, something strong, something powerful. All right. And their heads were as it were, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. So they were given authority, rulership, okay? The crown represents authority and rulership, okay? And their faces were as the faces of men. When a person thinks they're looking at a man, they feel as though they might be able to reason with him, make him considerate. Uh, but that didn't seem to be the case. And they had hair as the hair of women. What does that mean? The hair is given for a covering, for glory. So you have these locusts, locusts that devour things in their path. Okay, they were sent out to those men who did not have the seal of God on them. All right? And they were shaped like horses. Okay? On their heads, whereas it were crowns like gold. They were given authority, rulership. All right, the faces were as the faces of men. When you look at somebody and you think you're looking at a man, you assume that you can reason with him, that um, he has consideration, um, knowledge, dominion also was given unto men. They had hair as the hair of women. They had hair and adornment, glory. So... Something about them, okay, was an adornment, the hair, okay? And their teeth was as the teeth of lions. They were devourers, devourers. As I read this, and I started getting revelations, it started making me think of the plagues. A lot of these plagues, people are drawn to them. Everybody isn't fleeing. When you think about the place, like I told you, it's called crocodile. They're not fleeing from it. These people are seeking it out. And they assume that they can reason with it. They can control it. Okay, and you find out, no, you can't. And it has that crown because it's ruling over you. But it seems glorious to them, like the hair of a woman. It's glory. What is it representing? Right? And what do locusts do? They devour. As a matter of fact, um, wait a minute. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions, devour, destroy, devour. When you think of somebody, as I said, you're going to have to look up for yourself. The images, they even have videos of people who uh, have done that drug called Crocodile. It was over in Russia. I believe it was invented by the Germans. And, and, and that in and of itself is madness. Why would you invent this with somebody? But we know the evil ones. Um, and it's tearing Russia up. It's tearing Russia up. They're trying to keep it on the down low. It has now crossed into America. It is in different states. And it's cheaper than heroin. And this drug is a monster. It makes that opioid epidemic look like a baby. It makes it look like a baby in its effect, in what it does. People get so hot, they literally strip off their clothes, run naked up and down the street. It's just crazy. You have to look at the video. I did not want to put the video on because it's disturbing, and I don't want to see it again. Um, the little part that I did watch, I'm thoroughly convinced that it is... It is a plague. It is a plague. And it is in America now. Okay, it's running through Europe doing damage. I mean, damage. I'm, oh, look at the video. Okay? Uh, look at the video. I, I shan't be having to say this twice because you'll be telling somebody, like, did you see the video? All right? Oh, and by the by, don't play the video when your kids are in the room. When the little peewees are around, don't shake their little spirits and let them see that everything isn't for everybody. We're adults. 
Um, and some of these things can shake us, but we're adults. We know how to process this far better than the babies. You don't want to hurt your children or anybody else's child for that matter. So please, you know, us being brothers and sisters in the Lord, we look out for one another. We edify one another. Please be very conscious of making sure that no child sees that video because you will traumatize them if you do. You may be, it may be a little bit too much for you. That's why I said I'm not looking at it again, but moving along. Okay. Um, on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, rulership. And their faces were as the faces of men. A lot of people, when you think about uh, this plague, a lot of people get the idea they can reason with it. I can control it. How many people have been strung out on drugs? I got this. I can control it. No, baby, it's ruling you. Okay. They had hair as the hair of women. It seems glorious. It's attractive. It, it, it draws you in, okay? And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. It was the, you, you, when you see some people who are truly consumed with drugs, it's devouring them. It's devouring their body, their mind, their life. You see it, literally, a spirit's been unleashed on them, okay? Um, and they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron, indestructible. That's what it's telling you. Oh, you think you can handle this thing? Psh, you've got nothing for it. It's indestructible. It's in, you, get, you get in the grips of it. Oh, my God. Remember the golden crown? It's ruling over you. Okay, I'm talking about them, those who are of the, under that plate, right? Um... And they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running into battle. It's moving everywhere in power and thundering in, okay? And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months, okay? When I read about this, I just started getting revelation. And when I thought about the sting, the tail, the tail, it made me think of people who inject um, needles, the, the sting of when the injection goes in. When I go to the doctor and they first stick it in and it, it hurts, okay, it's stingy. It particularly depending on what's in that syringe. If whether they drawing blood or giving you a shot for something, some shots are stinky. Okay, if you're for people who are uh, injecting drugs, it's like a scorpion sting. It's stinging and it's constant. It's constant. It's constant. Meaning they're using it over and over and over and over. This is one of the plagues. Okay, and they had a king over them. Which is the king of the bottom, which is the angel, I'm sorry. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, bottomless pit, bottomless pit. Death, a place from which one shall not return. You enter in and saw, and we see you no more. We see you no more. You can think about it on a literal scale, or um, you can think about it figuratively, but either way you look at it, a bottomless pit, you fall into it, you shan't be returning, and there's nobody we can send down there to get you, okay? It's the grave. It's the grave, okay? And I heard, wait a minute, um, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, death, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, Abaddon, you know, when you read it, it's like a bad one, a bad one, a bad one, that's a bad one, a bad one, a bad one, okay, in the Hebrew tongue, but in the Greek tongue, hath his name Apollyon, Apollyon, one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter, um, I was going to get into uh, one of the other woes, but it was that one last night, uh, a friend of mine, we were just going over it and going over it. Um, they, uh, one of the other things about uh, locusts is 
they're solitary. When you look at these different things, remember they're, they're literal and they're metaphoric, they're symbolic. So when I looked up locusts, locusts actually are solitary, but then they have a tendency at different times to come together in large groups and they're migratory, they're, they're mi they migrate. Think about drugs. Think about the plague of drugs. Some people start out, particularly when they want to hide it, they're by themselves. They're solitary when that thing gets on. They're solitary. And then um, after a while, it's migratory because they're traveling all over the place, trying to get hit, trying to run into whoever's got it. Um, and a lot of times they'll run in packs, and it's attacking them. And uh, when it says they'll seek death, and death shall flee from them. You got to understand, brothers and sisters, yes, they, uh, death has been unleashed. Okay. However, some people, in order for them to get the fullness of the punishment, they have to live. They have to live for a while to fill it. All right. Um, these are just some of the revelations the Spirit put on me. There are a few more. Um, but right now, these are some of the ones I wanted to share with you. Uh, one was in the book of Zechariah. It talks about, let me get it again, because um, I'm, I'm moving. Uh, wait a minute. Um, and bear with me, bear with me. I love your patience. I'm loving your patience. Okay. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their hold, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. When I first read it, I, I, to be honest, I thought it was a nuclear blast. No, it's stronger than a nuclear blast. It's a yah blast, it, above and beyond anything we could hope or imagine. Like I said, when you look at these videos, when you see it, You'll understand and keep this in mind um, that God said it and now he's bringing it to pass. He, they, these are living images of it. One of the other things was the three days of darkness. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be three days of darkness. I, I just did not get that word right now. But what I did get was led to uh, uh, Exodus chapter 10. Well, yes, there was gross darkness, darkness that could be felt for three days in Egypt, and no one moved from that place where they were. However, Israel had light. There was light upon the Israel's, uh, Israelites, okay? Um, the other thing was in the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, all right? Uh, I don't want to go but so far, but so fast, um... So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just stick with this piece right here for today. And God willing, I'll be back. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. All right. Chapter 26, and I'm just going to, I'm going, well, no, I'm going to read it all. Chapter 26, starting at the 19th verse. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Okay, that was the first time I wrote, what, the earth shall cast out the dead? Uh, I don't, okay. Then, come my people, enter into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little while until the indignation be overpassed. Now, for verse 20, if that three days of darkness comes, verse 20 is for the children of Israel. If the three days of darkness come, we're still in the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, but now we're at verse 20. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. You pray, you fast, you study your word, okay? And we speak to one another, supporting one another. You definitely stay indoors. I, I, 
I really, even though I'm saying this, I, I find it kind of crazy to have to tell somebody who would walk outside in pitch black darkness. Darkness is, is, is so it's so thick you can feel it, like something's touching you. I'm not cracking the door. I'm not cracking the door. If there's three days of darkness, okay, I, I will follow exactly what y'all is saying right here. Come. My people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Let it pass over. Okay? Now, 21. For behold, this is about the earth disclosing her death. Okay? For behold, the, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. When they exhumed Megar Ever's body after it had been in the ground for 28 years, they were trying to get an eviction, a conviction against, uh, I think it's Brian De La Beckwith. They were trying to get a conviction. His body, them doing an autopsy 28 years later. Later, this man, it looked like 20 minutes later when they opened the casket, they actually called his family in. Um, one of his sons, if, if I remember correctly, had been about three years old when his dad died. Um, they were children. Remember, the father passed away. He was murdered in, on June 12, 1963. All right. They exhumed his body in 1990. One, 28 years later, all right, and they called the family in. It looked like 20 minutes later. As far, there was no decomposition on this man. And when they did the autopsy, his body testified against his murderer, and Brian De La Beckwith went to jail, okay? Um, again, and I'm just going to read that last verse, Isaiah 26, verse 21. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall.